Please. Uh, hello, my name is George Fotopoulos. Uh, I would like to make a point to Mr. Murray. Uh, the last point you made in favor of the motion was that uh, the people of Europe have the right to protect their identity and that their politicians should respect that right. Uh, and I would like to ask you why you feel that the presence of one or two or a thousand people with a different identity within a society threatens the identity of the people who were in the society originally. Whether you believe that is a legitimate concern or a primal fear, and whether you agree that when a primal fear drives a crowd, they become a mob, and that a politician should follow a mob and not provide leadership by calming the mob down and giving them a reason. That is my question. Thank you. And uh, towards the back. My name is Eli Liu. I was a student in the uh, University of Piraeus International European Studies. And um, I won't be very quick, but um, I am against the motion. And I would like to say that the European Union was an ex-colonial power. So most of the countries of the Third World was, were exploited from us. So now we cannot say that we don't accept them because most of their riches and their wealth were taken from us. And um, as for what Mr. Voridis said uh, about our values as Europeans, it's the. Um, the um, globalization that um, takes just, our. Just repeat that sentence, will you, please? You stopped in the middle. Yes, our values. Mr. Voridis talked about our values as European citizens, as humans. Well, I think globalization takes them from us and not immigrants. And um, about the shadow economy, it's the fault of the state control that doesn't um, eliminate it. And right, okay. That, that'll do for the moment. I think there are a lot of points to pick up, particularly okay. your challenges here to those speaking for the motion. But I want to hear voices as well uh, who are against the motion and would like to challenge those sitting on my left. But let's first of all uh, get those points picked up. Uh, Douglas Murray, your response particularly to that uh, challenge to you. Right, very quickly, first of all, if I were Hassan in Syria, I would hope among other things that I would help to rebuild my country after the Assad dynasty had wrecked it so completely. I'd hope that I would stay and help to rebuild the country after the devastation caused by that family. Secondly, secondly, um, the gentleman here who said, who said one or two people, the gentleman here said, why are you threatened by one or two people? I'm not threatened by one or two people. Nobody is threatened by one or two people. The figures I gave you showed we're not talking about one or two people. The figure I gave you at the very beginning was that people who identify as white British citizens are now a minority in their capital city. So we're not talking about one or two people, and it is very disingenuous to pretend that I was. Thirdly, the lady at the back, you say colonialism. I'd like to return the question to you. I don't deny the crimes of colonialism, not for a moment. I'd like to ask you a question. How long do former colonial countries have to be punished for then? How long do we have to have our identity erased for? Is there any end limit to it in your eyes? Or is it only at the point of complete negation? And finally, why is it that it's only European former colonialist countries? The largest, one of the largest and most significant and longest uh, colonial powers in history was the Turkish Empire. Do we do this to Turkey? Do we say to Turkey, you must have your identity erased as well as punishment for the past? Almost every single people in the world at some point has done something historically they could be punished for. But why, I wonder, is it that it is Europeans that we are always being heard, Douglas being Murray. offered that choice? Douglas Murray, thank you. Before we go to Makis Faridis, uh... <laughs> Ben Akushna. Well, I'm not sure.